Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for visiting the YouTube channel for bestbiblecommentaries.com. It's Theology Thursday, and in this video, I'm excited to tell you about a new release from Christian Focus Publishing called The Trial of the 16th Century by Jonathan Moorhead. Before I get into it, I invite you to subscribe to this channel if you're interested in seeing videos on Biblical Studies resources. Please consider clicking the thumbs up button. That really helps me out on YouTube. And feel free to leave a comment or ask a question down below. I'm also going to put a link to this book in the description box, um, to, a link to Amazon. So if you're interested in getting it, feel free to use that link. The Trial of the 16th Century subtitle is Calvin and Servetus. That's John Calvin and Michael Servetus. Uh, by Jonathan Moorhead from Christian Focus Publishing. Just came out about a month or so or ago, maybe a little bit longer. Um, I was not able to secure a copy of the first the first wave of this book, but I got a I got a second uh, one of the second wave. I think it sold out um, and was not available shortly after it was released. So, uh, like I said, it's 104 pages in length. The font size looks a little bit bigger than than average to me. So I think a lot of people will be able to read this book in a weekend or maybe two or three evenings. Um, Jonathan Moorhead is a graduate of Dallas Theological Seminary and the Master's Seminary, and um, he has served in Russia and the Czech Republic and specializes in church history, theology, and apologetics. The paragraph here on the back of the book gives a good summary of um, this event, what this book is about. Um, so I'm just going to read it for you. The execution of Michael Servetus is one of the most debated events in the life of John Calvin. It has left an indelible stain on Calvin's reputation, and unfortunately, the retelling of the story is often dependent on the historian's relationship to Calvinism. Jonathan Moorhead here seeks to give a faithful narrative of the role of John Calvin in the execution of Michael Servetus. So, at this time in history, uh, the Catholic Church, Eastern Orthodox, the Eastern Orthodox Church, and Protestant churches were all practicing execution um, because of heresy, executions due to theological heresy. And Michael Servetus was executed for heresy. He was burned alive. And John Calvin's involvement in that execution has de been debated for 500 years. And that's, that's what this book is about. The, the second paragraph in the preface does a good job of kind of um, um, giving context for the discussion. Calvinists are prone to defend their champion while withholding less than flattering evidence. On the opposite end of the spectrum, there is a penchant for non-Calvinists to portray Calvin as an intolerant, murderous villain, which has led to myths that Calvin personally arrested, tried, judged, and killed Servetus. Even famed atheist Christopher Hitchens asserts, quote, Calvin was a sadist and torturer and killer who burned Servetus, one of the greatest thinkers and questioners of the day, while the man was still alive. And that's from Christopher Hitchens' uh, famous book, God is Not Great. Uh, by the way, that is uh, absolutely false. Um, what Hitchens says about uh, Calvin. But to what extent was Calvin involved? That is really the the point of the book, and it is a fascinating history. So I'll, I'll get more into the story in just a moment, but I just want to say one of the things that um, was very helpful to me was, is how Moorhead gives an overview of the history of executions due to theological heresy in the history of the church. He overviews executions for heresy in the early church, and I learned a lot there. Um, and then he kind of fast forwards, because the purpose of the book is more the Reformation era. Um, he kind of fast forwards to the era of the Protestant Reformation and talks about how basically all of the reformers, not just Calvin, all of the reformers, um, uh, supported execution for theological heresy. And that's the context. That's the context in which um, Servetus is burned alive in Geneva. Um, it's, a, it's a fascinating read. Moorhead does a, 
excellent job of succinctly summarizing and overviewing um, the story. And I think he's very fair in what he says as well. What's really interesting, one of the things that's interesting about this book that I really like, that I don't recall seeing this anywhere in any other kind of history book before, is this. He has an uh, appendix, uh, and he summarizes the story in 21 in twenty one points. He summarizes the, the narrative, um, the, all, the 100 pages that came before. He summarizes in, you know, three pages. So I'm not going to read for you all 22 points, but I'm going to read a few of them just so you can get a better idea of the narrative and what kind of the conversation is and um, what the discussion and what the debate is. And then I'm going to share some other um, observations as well. So here's the first thing. Execution for heresy was supported in practice by Protestants, including Lutherans, Reformed, Anglicans, Anabaptist factions, and Protestant confessions, as well as Catholics and Orthodox. So that's that's the context in which um, Servetus is burned alive. Um, next, with most theologians of his time, Calvin supported the death penalty for unrepentant heresy. Uh, that's clear. That point's not really debated. Calvin, along with Knox, Zwingli, Luther, pick your reformer, they all supported um, execution for due to heresy. Next, Servetus, or sorry, um, since Servetus broke imperial law with his doctrine, his execution was lawful and anticipated by himself years prior to the event. So there's a lot of um, Serv Servetus's writings that uh, still survive, including letters he wrote to Calvin. And let me just say this, this man was full of venom. Um, I was just shocked at some of the things that he was saying to Calvin and saying about Christian doctrine. Um, I had never read it before, and um, it just really, it really blew me back. Um, so that was very interesting. Next, at a time when Protestants were being burned alive for their faith, Calvin risked his life by being willing to publicly meet with Servetus in Paris in order to convince him of his error, but Servetus did not keep the appointment. I'll say more about that in just a moment. Uh, next, although Calvin knew Servetus's true identity, so at, for a time Servetus uh, went by a false identity because he didn't want to be arrested and tried and killed. Uh, so that's the context for this statement. Although Calvin knew Servetus's true identity, he did not pursue his arrest by reporting him to the authorities, nor did he entice him to Geneva to entrap him. Uh, basically, Calvin was trying to give Servetus time to uh, repent and change his mind. Uh, next, Calvin was hesitant to send incriminating evidence to the Catholics trying Servetus, uh, preferring to fight heretics with doctrine. So it was not Calvin who arrested um, Servetus. Um, that's what I think. That's what Christopher Hitchens said. <laughs> um, but that is not true. The uh, Catholics actually arrested him. Next, upon Servetus' arrest, Calvin supported the death penalty, although he claims not to mention the form of punishment at the trial. So there is evidence that Calvin thought he should die, but not by being uh, burned alive. So um, the early church and the reformers, why did they burn people alive? Uh, many of them thought that they were mimicking the flames of hell, that that's God's judgment for um, heretics. Next, Calvin was not a resident of Geneva during the Servetus trial and had no authority to vote or hold office. So that's just one of the myths out there that Calvin arrested and tried him and lit the match. Um, all of that narrative is, um, is incorrect. 15, the magistrates assigned Calvin to outline charges against Servetus, but he was neither judge nor prosecutor uh, nor on a jury. Um, this is a really interesting point. We don't have a lot of information on Servetus's life, especially his early life. Um, his writings uh, give some insight into his, his character and his beliefs, but um, this is an interesting point here. Servetus's conduct during the trial and through his life has caused some to question his sanity. 
He demanded that Calvin be exterminated and that all of Calvin's property be given to him. Servetus's attacks against the magistrates and the pastors are thought to be another strong reason why he was executed. Considering Servetus's uh, Servetus is largely thought of as a champion of toleration and freedom of conscience. It is helpful to note that he supported execution for obstinate heresy, that he believed in the exclusivity of his own view of God, and that all tyrants of the church should be destroyed. So, um, what are doctrines that a, a person could be executed for at this time? Well, denying the Trinity, denying original sin, dev- denying the a deity of Christ. Uh, another one, one of the most controversial ones in the context of the church is um, infant baptism. Um, and there are some sad stories of Ulrich Zwingli, who was a leading reformer in Switzerland, and um, his his execution of uh, the Anabaptists. Um, it's one of the sadder stories in uh, Christian history, if you're not, if you're not uh, familiar with it. Uh, Number 19, uh, Calvin requested a more humane method of execution, but that was rejected by the magistrates. Um, Servetus was uh, burned alive, but in the absence of Calvin. So there's some historians who say, well, there's evidence that Calvin was in Geneva at the time. Uh, Moorhead argues that the strongest evidence seems to suggest that Calvin was actually not in the city at the time of his death. Still supported it, but um, not in the city at the time of his death. So um, unless you think uh, Moorhead is giving just one, uh, you know, 100% uh, defense of Calvin, he doesn't. And he says so here. Um, he talks about some different writings that Calvin uh, did after Um, after uh, Servetus was killed. And Moorhead says, in this work and in subsequent letters, Calvin defends Servetus's execution by the magistrates and indicates satisfaction concerning his involvement in Servetus's condemnation. This doubling down and insensitivity by Calvin is justifiably criticized by Calvin's supporters. Um, and then the last point here is just mentioning the different reformers that were in favor of um, execution for the purpose uh, because of heresy. And um, Moorhead is saying here that it's problematic to indict Calvin for his involvement in Servetus's execution while ignoring the activity of his fellow reformers. So a couple of takeaways I, I had, um, you might have different ones from reading the book, but I thought it was good insight into um, just how to have a theological discussion on a controversial uh, matter. I think that um, Calvinists and Arminians should should read this book if they're interested in this in this topic. And I think Moorhead does a good, di- di- good discussion by um, saying what is true and not true of Calvin, and then also um, criticizing him. Uh, at certain points as well, when he thought that that was warranted. Uh, Number two is it it gave me insight into Protestant history, early church history, but also Protestant history. And I just was not familiar. I've read many Christian history books, um, but I was just not familiar with the extent that uh, Protestants were involved in um, execution for what reasons, why, how people were executed. Um, that just, just opened my eyes. I hope to read more on that topic in the future. Um, and the third thing is just a, a just a personal um, observation on Calvin. Now, Moore had said that he accused him of some insensitivity after Servetus has died. Um, so I'll let you come to your own conclusions on that. But I do think it, one of the one of the points of the story that really reflected Calvin's uh, pastor's heart. Um, and I think Arminians and Calvinists can, I, I think they would agree on that, is that Calvin regularly met with men who were wrestling with doctrine. Um, and that's actually the context for which Calvin wants to meet with Servetus in uh, Paris to discuss um, the, the heresy um, and try and correct him with scripture and correct him with doctrine. And Calvin had a habit of doing that. And to me, I I thought that was just really reflected a a pastor's heart, um, a patient approach. Again, 
Calvin supported the execution of Servetus. So, you know, say what you want to about that. Um, but I just thought that habit of meeting with people um, with accused heretics and trying to correct them with doctrine was was um, something. <laughs> it was telling um, of Calvin. And that he also had a teacher's heart, that he wanted to correct with doctrine, he wanted to correct with scripture. So anyway, those were my takeaways. You might have different takeaways after reading the book. So it's called The Trial of the 16th Century. I'll leave a link down below. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope, hope, hopeful, I'm hopeful that it was interesting and helpful. See you next time.